May we talk to you for a moment here? Yeah. Will you tell us what you what you're trying to do here? Well, th this was the um, bail hearing, of course, and as I said this morning, this was on the question of uh, whether there would be the capacity for intent, the capacity for malice, or any capacity whatsoever. And this is something that's inquirable on a bail hearing, and that's the reason we wanted uh, this man on, followed by the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist is now in his own field, going to take up from where the clinical psychologist left off. Well, what does malice have to do with whether or not he's let on bail? Well, the question on bail is whether the, the uh, capital punishment uh, is a probable consequence of an act. And capital punishment can't be probable consequence of an act. Man doesn't know he's committed. In other words, if you are insane at the time, if you're not uh, competent at the time, if you're in one of these fugue or one of these psychomotor epileptic states, you're unknowledgeable of what you do, then uh, certainly there can't be capital punishment. Now, in Texas, you're bailable if uh, it is not a capital punishment case. Well, would you say that Dr. Schaefer is your most important uh, witness in this, uh, making this point, Mr. Bellack? Well, he's one of the po most important so far until the next one comes out. I haven't heard him yet, but I suppose he's going to be just equally as good. Well, this is left to the judge to determine whether or not it's likely to, that there will be a capital... Uh, That's the law of Texas. Would you describe it for us better than I did, please? I just did. You weren't listening. <laughs> well, would you say it again for us? The probability of capital punishment in a case is the determinative of bail. Period. And it is up to the judge to make that determination on the he basis of this the, hearing? He makes the decision on it. His, his uh, determination, of course, isn't the judicial finding, the probity finding, that's the ultimate fact and issue here before a jury, that uh, pendent elite, pending the trial, it, uh, is the thing that uh, he determines. What other motions do you expect to submit here in the next couple of days? I think this is all. Just on the matter of bail? On the bail. And on the question, I think you have it, of uh, the examination at the hospital. Now, uh, our doctor this morning, Dr. Schaefer, said that they wanted a full neurological in the hospital. And I think that that will be determined without the necessity of uh, further motions on it. Joe did, Joe Tonyhill did something on that the other day. Have both sides agreed to that? I think we better wait until the judge makes an announcement on that. Now, he may today. What is the status of the change of venue request? rocking along. We're, we're still uh, requesting it respectfully from the court. How long do you expect the hearing to last now? Well, we should be away from here at the very latest tomorrow night, and if we move uh, fast and uh, long today, we might be through today. So I can get back to San Francisco. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you so much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm attorney in the chamber this morning under guard of Dallas plainclothes police and met by his lawyers. In the few minutes before the session started, we managed to talk with Ruby. Among other things, he explained he did try to sell jeeps to Cuba. That was in 1959 when our government was on better terms with Cuba and actually encouraging dealings with the Cubans. The deal did not work out. I wanted to get out of the beer business, to be honest with you. And I've never been a, a person looking for a fast bus. I lived in back my car for two years. That's right. Did you ever speak to Lee Oswald in your life? Never have. Never. I never used the term angry. That's not in my vocabulary. And any enterprise I went into was specifically legitimate. Jack, not only he asked you if you ever spoke to him, not only the lawyer never speak to him. Did you ever? Did Ruby ever talk to Oswald? I've never known him in my life. Never have. What did you say about angry, Mr. Ruby? I mean, it's not in my vocabulary. It was in my... This is the word angry? Yes, I mean, it was used constantly here with reference to how I felt. Ruby's talking about the word angry. I was more remorseful than angry as I lost. What are you, specifically, what are you referring to now? What is he referring to now? Tell us how you felt about it. A question asking Ruby how he felt about it. Kind of a mistake. I couldn't understand how great we had that to be lost. That was the lawyer pointing out this was the sort of breakdown that his lawyer's claim makes Ruby emotionally unstable. Herbert Kaplow, NBC News in Dallas, Fort Worth.
comes. Tell it, Joe. Bye bye. Go ahead. Uh, how do you think the things are going thus far for you, sir? Well, we'll be we'll be through, I hope, by noon tomorrow with the remaining witnesses, and I think then we can answer a number of questions, or the judge will, with reference to um, trial date, uh, when he's going to hear these other motions that we have. We're almost through here with uh, our witnesses. Have proceedings gone the way you had thought they might, sir? As far as the hearing? Well, I'm always hopeful on anything that I do, even when I'm a lap behind. So that's not uh, in context with this case, though. You don't consider yourself a lap behind, though? I certainly don't. I can't do any more. I mean, we're not supposed to, and I just don't want to uh, do that. But you will get you will get uh, a conclusion on all of these things as to when trial is, uh, how we're going to proceed, uh, the end of the bail thing, everything. I'm pretty sure by noon tomorrow. I think the judge will announce it, at least in uh, consideration of the witnesses that we've got. Good night. Good night.